My grandpa Jim was in the U.S. Coast Guard Reserve for eight years during and around the time of the Korean War, which was very much attached to the Cold War as we helped one side and the Soviets fought for the other. The war went from June 1950 to July 1953. While my grandpa never went overseas, the U.S. did provide 88% of the 341,000 international soldiers that aided South Korean forces. Well, I was in college, and I was going to be drafted into the armed forces. Didn't know which one at the time. But <clears throat> because I wanted to see if I could get through college, uh, I joined the United States Coast Guard Reserve Unit. Which meant that I didn't have to active right away, but I would have to go to uh, reserve meetings every week in uniform. That was going to be every Tuesday night. And uh, because I was in college 50 miles south of Cleveland, where the reserve unit was, I would have to tra travel back and forth from Worcester, that's co where the college was, mm -hmm. from Worcester to Cleveland, and then back from Cleveland to Worcester. Well, because I lived in Cleveland, I could stay overnight with my father and mother, so I would hitchhike up every uh, Tuesday afternoon in uniform, that's important, because it made hitchhiking a lot easier. People would pick up guys in uniform yeah. um, very easily. I did that for, well, I did that for three years because I started in the reserve unit when I was a sophomore in college. Well, I'm not scared of it so much as it was, I was saying to myself, I really want to get through college mm -hmm. uh, because I was the only kid in our family that went to college. and. Um, it was pretty important to my parents. Was I afraid? I didn't think much about uh, being afraid at the time. It was not that kind of a, an issue. Although the Korean War was a bad war. I probably did some thinking about it, but I never dwelt on it. Well, I probably thought about it because when I went into the reserve unit, it was intentionally so that I could finish college. And I must have had some thoughts during that three-year period that, w that I was finishing up college. I must have thought sometime that our unit, our reserve unit in Cleveland, would be called up because it was a possibility. The war was going on, but uh, I don't think I gave much thought to worrying about it, uh, fearing it. I was just kind of hopeful to get through, yeah. which I did. My grandma was a young girl who grew up in World War II in King Ferry, New York, with two siblings. Her tiny town had about 200 people in it, and there were only seven kids in her graduating high school class. This is how the war affected her. I was nine years old in 1941. Uh, so, uh, and then in 45, I was 13, so I was from 9 to 13 during the war. Mm -hmm. Well, I remember the radio was important. Uh, I remember uh, standing around and sitting around the radio when the announcement was made of the attack on Pearl Harbor in December 1941, and everybody being concerned about that. And then all during the war, every night at supper time, We'd have the radio on for the news of what was happening in the different battles of the, of the war. And my dad was particularly interested because he had been in World War I in France. And so he had been in quite a few of those same names were familiar to him because he had been in the war as a soldier in the army and had been wounded. Uh, so he was very concerned about the war. Of course, we all were. And we did what we could to, to help, I remember the rationing, having a uh, sugar ration, right, and gas. Gasoline was rationed, yeah. and sugar, oh, and yes. meat, I believe. Uh, so those Ooh. things we had to be careful about. But one thing I do remember, I remember saving uh, aluminum foil, and it, any used aluminum foil, you wad up and make a ball out of it, and then keep adding onto it till you get a good-sized ball, and then those were turned in so they could be used. Uh. 
the aluminum could be used from that. And one other thing that does, in terms of helping out our little town, we had a, a post, which was just a little square building in the back of the schoolyard, where volunteers would go every day and look for airplanes. And when an airplane went over, you made a phone call to a place to tell what the airplane was, what it looked like, and which way it was going, because that was part of an air watch. Because there was a fear that there would be, you know, airplanes coming and, and bombing us. In terms of people, uh, we lived in really small towns, so there were not a lot of people there, but <coughs> things that stand out was that there was a one woman who was right out of high school, uh, was joined the Waves, which the women had a chance to do something, and she was in the Navy, uh, and she was a Wave, and everybody was very proud of her. And a, a cousin of mine was in the uh, Army, and he was in England during the war. Uh, I remember that, and then I had an uncle who was in the Air Force, uh, he flew a P-38, which was a fighter plane, and he was shot down over Germany and was a prisoner. And so we had an anxious time about that, and at the end of the war, he was rescued and uh, he was okay. But other thing that was, for our small town, there was a young man who was an older brother of a, a good friend of mine in high school, who was in the army back in the, you know, when the war broke out. He was in the Philippines. And he was part of that uh, terrible march on uh, Bataan, Frigidor, where they su su surrendered to the Japanese. And had he died on that march that uh, they uh, were forced to make, and that was a tough thing for his family. And I remember at the end of the war, in the spring of 1945, the excitement, I think it was in April maybe, when the war with Europe was over, people being all very excited oh, yeah. and happy. And then I was in a camp, in summer camp, in a 4-H camp on a lake uh, in central New York in August when the Japanese surrendered. I remember the excitement there when we were at camp. Everybody knew that the war was over. But I don't think at that age you really understand how horrible war is. Yeah. Uh, but and that's with the, with the people that you knew about that were in danger or had been killed. It, it hit home, you know, somewhat. Mm -hmm. I think as you grow older you realize how the war is, how useless it is and how horrible it is.